to Soul Via Soul, the podcast where we embark on a journey of self-love and true wellness. I'm your host, Jada, and I'm absolutely delighted to have you here with me as we dive into all things mind, body, and soul. Now, what do you say we get this thing started? Let's dive in. It's about loving yourself enough to say, this is what I will accept. And this is what I won't accept. It's you actually create the boundary. You create the guardrail with the things that are important to you. You need to be able to speak for yourself. You need to be able to voice what matters to you and it needs to be honored. But don't you really want it to be a yes, or they nudge you or push you or coerce you or bully you into you changing your mind? That person is violating your personal boundaries. You have the right to say, I need some space. Boundaries are meant to create healthy limits and improve relationships. Hi and welcome. Today, we're going to talk just a little bit about boundaries. Now, this is a difficult conversation. And it's not that it's difficult in and of itself. It actually was difficult for me. This was something that took me a long time to learn. Maybe it's because I was born in the South and raised in a way that I was supposed to kind of take care of other people and be the nice girl and do what people expected of me, that it left me feeling mean if I were to create a boundary. I didn't even know what the word meant. In fact, I didn't even have boundaries until I was going through my divorce when I was in my mid thirties and I suddenly learned the word boundary. And I, I, I remember it resonating. And I remember thinking at first a very negative connotation, but then my therapist, I was in therapy, therapy at the time, she said, I want you to think of a boundary as a guardrail. It's actually what you put in a relationship to keep it strong and healthy. It's necessary. You wouldn't drive your car on a mountainous road with no guardrails. You would feel out of control and a little bit scared and it's dangerous. Guardrails provide safety and support. And if you lose control or you start your engine dies or your tire blows and you find yourself veering off the road, it's going to keep you from falling off the cliff. And I thought, well, that sounds good. I think that sounds a little bit better than this hard line in the sand of no, 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 and don't, don't, don't. And all these negatives that I kind of associated a boundary with. But if we think of guardrails, as boundaries and boundaries as guardrails, then we see them as helpful, necessary, needed, and ultimately we're glad they're there because who wants to go driving off the cliff? Not me. So one of the hardest things to do for me, hopefully not for you, is to create a boundary. So just remember, relationships are complex and it can be tricky and there's no right or wrong, black or white. There's always a little mystery and messiness when it comes to relationships. So it's going to be a little bit of how you interpret the things that we're going to talk about today. So here are seven sort of guide posts or um, guardrails, if you, if you will, on creating healthy boundaries. And again, this is an important, necessary um, protection for maintaining healthy relationships and self-care. Creating healthy boundaries is really about honoring our own needs. It's about loving yourself enough to say, this is what I will accept. And this is what I won't accept. It's you actually create the boundary. You create the guardrail with the things that are important to you. So 
again, take this with a little grain of salt because what's important to you is what's important to you. What you need and want in a relationship may be different than what someone else wants and needs in a relationship. So for today's chat, let's talk about what it is to create healthy boundaries with family members, because that can be tricky. Okay. So when you are with family, which can be awesome and it can also be emotionally exhausting. If you are feeling emotionally drained after interacting with certain family members consistently, and they often leave you feeling emotionally exhausted, overwhelmed, or drained, it might be a sign that a boundary needs to be set. You do not have to sacrifice your own time, mental health for the sake of not offending or hurting someone else's feelings. Love yourself enough to say, I'm not going to allow this in my life. Now, of course, you don't have to cut the person out of your life, but you can limit contact. You can create um, a boundary where maybe that person doesn't uh, live with you or stay with you for an extended period of time, or that person doesn't um, constantly come over and, and, and take time where you feel exhausted after their interaction. Maybe you need to limit the amount of time you see that person. Maybe you can take them in small doses. Maybe you, you just have to know that you can have X amount of time with this person and still leave with your energy intact. But if you exceed that, you're done. So if you feel emotionally drained after spending time with people, <sighs> that might be something to think about. Maybe you want to limit your exposure to that person. And by doing so, create a boundary with time. So the next one is repeated violations of personal boundaries. So what if you said to that person, Hey, like I can't do, I can't see you every weekend, or I, I'm not going to spend this much time with you, or I'm not going to, I'm not interested in, in doing that tonight. I'm, I, I want to stay in tonight or whatever you decide is right for you. If that person just pushes and pushes or resists or just says, no, I'm going to pick you up anyway. It's good for you. You need to go. Well, then that person is disregarding your boundary. And when you have said to someone, this is a no. And that person says, well, but don't you really want it to be a yes, or they nudge you or push you or coerce you or bully you into you changing your mind? That person is violating your personal boundaries. When you have the courage to state what it is you need, and then that person says, I don't think I'm going to respect that or honor that. And they choose to go around circumvent or ignore your request they are violating your personal boundary and that is not okay. Your boundary should be respected and honored to maintain a healthy dynamic. Number three, unhealthy patterns or dynamics, realizing patterns of dysfunction, such as codependency, manipulation, enabling, or toxic behaviors like bullying within your family relationships is recognizing that you've got some unhealthy ways of communication. Manipulation and coercion and bullying are never a part of a healthy relationship. If these patterns persist and they continue, they will negatively impact your well-being. So I've had a lot of people come to me actually because they're so stressed out that they can't create a boundary that they now have anxiety or depression, or they're not sleeping because they don't know how to set a boundary or they set a boundary and it's constantly being disregarded. Well, then it's time to go to the next level, which is creating a stronger boundary. And that's actually what I encourage people to do. If, if someone ignores your line in the sand, if they ignore your boundary, then you draw a, 
a, a larger line in the sand. You withhold even more. For example, I did this when I was parenting. If my kids did a certain behavior, they lost a certain privilege. Say if they stayed out past curfew, for example, they lost the privilege um, of curfew now being, let's say, 11 o'clock. Curfew now gets moved to 10 because you violated that boundary. Now I've pulled it in even tighter. Let's say that they now don't withhold that boundary and they come in after I strengthened that boundary. So the curfew is now 10 instead of 11 and they did it again. Well, then at that point, maybe they lost the privilege of going out at all. So you pull back the boundaries until people learn to honor and respect them. And that's a, a good parenting tip. Like if you're trying to create and teach your children boundaries. Number five, lack of autonomy. So lack of autonomy or independence. If you feel that your individuality is constantly undermined, your choices are disregarded, or you are excessively controlled or micromanaged by family members, it may be time to establish boundaries that allow you to assert your independence and make decisions for yourself. You need to be able to speak for yourself. You need to be able to voice what matters to you and it needs to be honored. And you, you have the right to be independent of your own body and your mind. Number six, emotional or physical harm. Now, if a family member consistently engages in emotionally abusive behavior, displays aggression, or poses a threat to your safety, it is crucial to prioritize your well being and establish strong boundaries to protect yourself from harm. In these instances, you have to be really strong like, that is not acceptable. I said no. If you do not step away. I will call 911. Those are all really strong, very strong boundaries, but that's when you really feel like you are being harmed by the action or the potential action or threats of another person. You absolutely a hundred percent without doubt have the power to always say, no, stop. I'm calling the police. That's an important one. Number six, need for personal space or privacy. So everyone needs personal space. Everyone needs privacy. If you feel suffocated or invaded uh, in your personal life, whether it's due to constant intrusions, excessive involvement or invasions by privacy of a family member, you have the right to say, I need some space. And it might be necessary to set some boundaries to reclaim that space. Like, you know, I, when I go to my room, I'm going to close the door because I need to have some space. I'm going to respect that you knock before you enter. That's just a basic, um, courtesy, but you would be surprised the number of people that, especially in families where, um, parents will just walk into a child's bedroom without knocking. And again, everybody's different in this regard. So you have to do what works for you. But if my door is closed, I am startled and a little bit, um, angry if someone just barges in. Same thing is true for your young adult children or your adolescent children. You know, um, the younger ones may not know to like close the door, but they may have a secret or a special place that they like to go to. And they just feel secure and safe and like a little hidey hole where they feel like it's just theirs, which is why kids love like little closets or little playrooms, or they build tents and forts is they really love that sense of privacy. And it feels nice to have like your own little space. We need to honor that. We need to honor that with every member of our family. And then the last number seven, misaligned values or goals. If you find that your core values, beliefs, or your life goals differ significantly from those of certain family members, it might be necessary to set boundaries to preserve your own sense of identity and pursue your own path without constant interference or judgment. Again, 
is kind of where you need to all be on the same page here when you're thinking about creating boundaries within your family. Sometimes, and I saw this a lot with like the political uh, climate is those big values really had and created ripples and divisions within families that were sometimes irreparable. So there are some things that maybe you just don't, you just don't go there. It's just not worth potentially what it can cause. You just also need to respect everyone's got different opinions. And, and if you want to stay together as a family, you know, some of those beliefs and some of those things that you hold dear, maybe it's not something as dinner conversation. Maybe it's something that you just keep private and keep to yourself. And not that you can't share your values and expressions, but you have to understand that if different members of your family have different values or beliefs, then, and if they differ significantly from you, you might just not want to be a bridge you want to cross often. So again, it's important to remember that setting boundaries does not mean cutting off or severing ties with family members. Boundaries are meant to create healthy limits and improve relationships. They establish clear and respectful communication, seeking support sometimes from a therapist can be necessary if you find yourself having difficulty creating and maintaining healthy boundaries within your family. But again, healthy boundaries are like guardrails. They keep us safe. They create clear communication. We know where the line is. And most importantly, healthy boundaries stem from loving you. When you love you, you can create healthy boundaries that help safeguard the love you have for you. And it teaches others ultimately how to love and care for you too. If you enjoyed this podcast, then I have some great news for you. First, like and subscribe to stay up to date with new episodes on all things wellness to help you connect back to you for healing and wellness in body, mind, and soul. Secondly, consider joining the coolest membership around called the VIA Collective to enhance your personal wellness journey unlike any other program out there. As a medical and mental health professional, this membership is jam-packed with tools, resources, mini courses, workshops, guided meditations, and guided journal exercises, as well as exclusive pricing on all my courses and includes optional monthly one-on-one -on -one individual and group coaching, coaching sessions on all things wellness. It's like having a medical professional and mental health professional on call and tucked in your back pocket to help you reconnect to you and come home to living your best life. Go to the link in the show notes and join the VIA Collective today and elevate your mental and physical health. The best version of you is waiting.